In a long career which symbolizes both star power and staying power, George Siegel has entertained us on stage, in motion pictures, and currently on TV, where he's one of the stars of the NBC sitcom called Just Shoot Me. He is a favorite guest and friend of this show, and I'm always pleased to welcome Mr. Siegel back to our humble abode here at CBS. Thanks for coming on. You know, in doing some research on you, I went to the computer today and typed up George Siegel. Do you know that there are two of you? Yes, I do know there that is there a, are There's a famous American sculptor who made plaster casts of people, and he also uh, has a lot of, you know, entries on the, uh, on, on, on the research tool. Right, and he, he is shown, among other places, in the uh, Modern Museum of Art in New York. And I, uh, before I had any uh, kind of fame or notoriety, it was always pleasant for me to go in and see my name. Oh, really? Uh, beautifully done, because they're so clean and simple there yes, at the Modern Plaster Museum. casting is that way. Yeah. Well, plaster casting, yes. Uh, that's a rock and roll. Well, that's, uh, that's that another using, yes. yes. Uh, but, no, he does whole <laughs> yeah, figures. The entire person yes, is yes, opposed to specialization. Yes, 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 exactly. Thank you. Now, you um, uh, are now in syndication, as it were, Just Shoot Me. Mm -hmm. Very successful. And mm -hmm. I'm told that you went to New Orleans to the programming convention mm -hmm. to promote the show and meet the people. What, what happened during your visit to New Orleans? Well, I didn't know. It's called NATP. NATP, for your right. Inf inf information. And it's a whole other uh, business uh, distributing these things mm -hmm. once they go into syndication. We, however, are not in syndication. Oh, you're not? Not yet. We oh. were there teasing. David Spade and I went down, and then we, we sat in chairs, uh, higher chairs. Right, right, right. And then people, uh, station managers, would come in, and they'd have a number, and there'd be a number on the guy taking the picture. And David doesn't like flashes, so that was great. There was no flashing. Uh -huh. And they would stand between us, and we'd have a few words, and they'd take the picture. Oh, so the idea then would be <coughs> that the station manager would have his picture taken with the stars, so to speak, you and David Spade. That's right. And then if they liked you and got along with you, maybe they would want to buy the show in syndication and run it on their television station. Yes, but I don't think it depended on our personal personalities at the, at the time of the show. I think the show has to speak for itself, no mm -hmm. matter how charming David Well, then what was the reason you went down to New Orleans? Uh, to uh, try and get these people to pick up the show. Uh, which I guess is essentially what you what said. What I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, also, it, it's, it's, it was never clear to me what we were doing. It, it, it's yeah. a publicity gig, and you just mm -hmm. go. But uh, these guys are like super car salesmen. They're very, <laughs> yes. they're fast talkers. Yes. It's a whole, we don't run into those kind of people because they're selling different kinds of products. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know yeah. what else they do a lot at those conventions is they drink a lot. They do well. New Orleans, you have uh, you have the advantage of all that great food. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, prodigious eating that went on, yeah. kind of nonstop. There's a kind of desperation almost because it's all so good from breakfast on. True. But it was and a, su a, so good a successful trip, right, to New Orleans? Yeah. It was, I assume. Other people would have to say that. But for me, it was, yes, yeah, thank okay. you, a good. successful very, very trip. Very, very good. Now, you know, I was watching the Golden Globes here about a month ago, and you were a nominee. And I was rooting for you because mm -hmm. I like you a lot, and you're my pal, and you come here. And you didn't get the Golden Globe, but uh, at least you got a nomination, which yeah. they say is, uh, is sometimes an honor enough, huh? Well, we got five. You see, right, which was set some kind of record for this deal, so that was really nice. Yeah, the nomination is the thing. I say that because I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Michael J. Fox would probably say it's all in the winning. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's that, he has a point of view. Yeah. But now you won the uh, you won the Golden Globe in 1964, was it, as the most promising newcomer? Right? Newcomer. Yes, uh, yes, uh, that was uh, that was the Golden Globes were in their infancy. I mm -hmm. think they just they did have a show on them, but and I had called uh, 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 my friend Buck Henry, who is a you know a, oh, sure, a writer, writer, yeah. writer, writer, uh, to give me. I thought I would have to say a few words as the newcomer of the year, and he said, "Let me think about it." And he called back in about three days, and he said. What about thank you very much? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Sounded good Oh, to that me. buck has a way with words. I know he does. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, but it's the taste. It's yeah. how you use yeah. those words. <laughs> and when I got there, I was saying it over and over again. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Because I was a lock on the newcomer of the mm -hmm. year. Well, it turns out that at the end of the show, uh, there were five newcomers. Five Nobody newcomers. told me. I remember Topol was one of them. But anyway, we didn't, there was no stopping at the microphone. They were out of time, and they ran us. And here are the five newcomers of the year. And they boom, ran boom, us boom. across the stage, yes, to no applause. So that was chastening. And then in 1973, mm -hmm. you didn't even get to go. To I don't Golden. know why. It's all a haze. 19, you know, remember the early 70s. But I wasn't there. I was at the 
at the emergency room. Right, didn't uh, somebody get hurt? Uh, yes, yes, there was a lady uh, who worked for us, okay, yeah. and, and uh, I think she twisted her ankle or something, mm -hmm. lovely ladies, and I took her to the, uh, to the UCLA uh, emergency. emergency ward, and, uh, and I'm waiting there, you wait a long time, as right. you know, and somebody next to me said, aren't they talking about you? And it was a little black and white screen that they uh -huh. have in those waiting rooms, and yes, and there it was, and the, the, the director and the writer, Mel Frank, uh, took the award, uh, and I was watching. Oh, for Touch of Class. For Touch of Class, yeah. yes. Exactly. With Glenda Jackson. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you kind of do a, a historical update. One of my favorite movies was Touch of Class, when, when the travel agent says, and what about Mother? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very funny yeah, way. Thank you. Now, the last time you were here, we talked a little bit about your love of language. And in reading about you this afternoon, I read that you took French in the, in the early grades, like sixth or seventh grade. You were, you were studying French and speaking it, as a matter of fact. Well, uh, this is probably a, a reference. Yes, I did. And I had what I thought was a good accent. Of course, I'd never heard a real French person. Mm -hmm. So it was just, I guess it was, I'd seen Maurice Chevalier, and that was about it. Excuse me. <coughs> Cher say little phlegm. I walk right into those, don't uh, I? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. we're French, you see, Cher say Oui, oui. Ah, she, oh, yeah, oui, oui. French. Oh, yeah, everything. Your lips tell yeah. me no, no, but yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, well, if I could just back up a little, because... Sure. Uh, I used to go in... We have plenty of time. ...when I was like 12 or 13 from Great Neck, which is outside of New York, mm -hmm. and I would take the Long Island Railroad uh, into 42nd Street. I knew how to get to 33rd to... I knew just to, to 42nd. And then I would usually go to the Laugh movie, which had those bendy mirrors that, you know, those... Oh, surely. The, front, yeah, the House of that Mirrors. made it the Laugh movie and, and uh, Hugo's uh, Flea Circus. And I went to a lot of places on 42nd Street. Excuse me? Hugo's, I think it was Flea Circus. Flea, Flea, Flea. Yeah, they had a Flea Circus. They also had Albert Alberta there, who was a half man, half woman. Really? Which half? For another 25 cents, I take you back and show you what you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like a woman to me, but what the hell. Anyway. What, did you ever get back to see her? Uh, no, because I was uh, oh, too small. Too small. You got you, buddy. So, anyway. Um... Uh, well, there used to be an island, that, you know, where the, in, in New York, uh, at Times Square, where the uh, services, where they have the induction, not the induction booth, but, you know, you can go you up to... Sign the, up for the military. For the, for the, for the, for the military, yes. The military. yes. Yeah. Recruiting and booth. A recruiting booth, exactly. Right. Well, those <laughs> things fail me, so it's nice yeah, to have you here. So, uh, <laughs> I won't be here long. You know. <laughs> yeah, but while you're here. Yeah, while I'm here. Okay. Right. So there was a fence, and they were... It, it, it I remember that looked like a little down. picket fence. Yeah, 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 well, it was, a, yeah, it was an know, iron fence, and a little little island that extended from that it's gone now and they would have cars parked on either side that's right but the point is that you were kind of trapped there as you would get in inside the cars and you would edge your way along and then you'd get out and you'd cross over at like 44th street correct so i was going like this across and then there was this guy in a gray raincoat who came up right in front of me uh, i didn't have a t a too much experience coming i was like a country boy so right. i didn't Great know what was going right. on right exactly so this guy says to me something like, uh, and we're face to face, like, you want to go to the 181 club or something? And I, I, I couldn't put it together, but I, I did know there was a transvestite club downtown. Really? It was the one, I, and, and he was and, inviting and, and, me and to come with And how old were you at the time? Uh, 12 or 13. You know no, I was in the... seventh grade. No, I, I found this out afterwards. Oh, I see. Because okay. I remembered, when I, but it didn't sound like a place, uh, you know, with clowns and stuff like that, exactly. that I would be interested yep. in seeing, or the market. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they would dress up, but it wouldn't yes, be, wouldn't wouldn't be, be the kind of thing right. that I would be looking right. for. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> In any case, uh, I had thought that should these things happen, because I was told, don't speak to strangers, strangers and all right. that stuff, and it's New York City, and there's that little concern. Uh, so I had seventh grade French with Mrs., uh, I think, Beaujean, I forget what her name was. In any case, uh, Mrs. Guinea, actually. And um, uh, I said... Mrs. Beaujean was probably the other half of No, the, Mrs. Beaujean was my kindergarten oh, teacher, okay. and I have a special place in my heart, so her name keeps coming up no matter what I'm talking about. Right. In any case... Uh, I said, uh, uh, je ne parle pas anglais. Do you know what that means? I don't speak English. Hey. Well, that's what I said to this guy, you see. And he comes back quick as thought with, voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Would you like to go to bed with me? Yeah, something like Sleep that. With Sleep with me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I didn't speak French that well that I, I had to translate that, so it took me a moment before. Uh-huh. 
I shrieked. No, no, no! <laughs> Which is French for no. Right, right. <laughs> and then he said, your lips tell me no, no. <laughs> but there's wee-wee in your eyes. Thank you. We are, we are chatting with uh, George Siegel from Just Shoot Me back after these oh. messages. <laughs> uh, with George Siegel, here's Judy on the toll-free in Campbellsville, Kentucky. Hi, Judy, and welcome to CBS. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, I'm yes. here. Go ahead, Judy. Uh, uh, my question to Mr. Siegel, and first, Tom, um, man, this is a pleasure. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do without you on the late night, night, night. Thank you. But I want to know to Mr. Siegel, what do you do to relax? You're such a high-energy person. Uh, I mean, how do you chill? <laughs> they have to hit me with switches to get me... <laughs> To get me going, uh, but thank you. If I get, oh, you mean be, oh because I enjoyed talking to him so much. Yeah, I, I guess this is high energy for me. Uh, uh, gee, you know I play the banjo and, and and my wife and I sing songs together, and that's uh, wonderful. For real deal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She sings great harmony, and um, uh, I, I, I've asked that a lot. What do you do for relaxation? Like, do you play golf or cards? No, of any I don't kind? do any uh, cards. Cards? Cards, you know, bridge I'm or gin rummy once in a while. Game. Oh, oh, we play a casino. Sonia and I play casino. Oh, really? Do you know casino? Because it's great. Elliot Gould taught me casino, and really? it's addictive. And it's kind of telepathic because how the cards come out sometimes really, it's, it's really interesting. It's better than magic, which I like a lot. So, Judy, he and his it's wife so sing and play the banjo. He plays poker occasionally, and he loves the card game casino, and that's how he relaxes. Well, see, I'm a card player. What do you play, Judy? Um, I, I poker and oh, horse and good. any of those kind of games. Good, good. Casino deals, and um, it is fascinating how the cards come out. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Sometimes they're red, sometimes they're black. It's amazing. I hope you ain't that a <laughs> deal. <laughs> so what else, Judy? Oh, where's your favorite place in the world to relax? Like, if you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Well, the times I've been, I know it's a cliche, but the times, not that often, that I've been to Hawaii, I have really relaxed. But I've also relaxed in Martinique and the stuff in the, in the, when, ah, I see what you mean, high-pressure life, right. Yeah, you when like you have a kind of a high-pressure life, it is nice to go to those island paradises and just because there's nothing to do, and the sand and the water and all of that, it's nice, and the Mai Tais. See, I'm reading your lips on my TV as we're speaking, because they told me to turn the volume down. Right. This is so wonderful. Isn't it, though? Yeah, it is. It it's is. almost like it could go on forever, isn't it, Judy? Yeah, Yeah, but it, it can't. <laughs> you are such a wonderful person, and... Uh, Tom, we're going to miss you. Okay, Judy, I thank you for calling, and thanks for watching our show tonight. Hey, thank you, dear. Okay, this dear. This is the highlight of my day. Okay, well, let's hope tomorrow's better. Good night, Judy. Thanks. Bye-bye now. You know the li nice lady, wasn't she? From yes. Campbell's, yes. Campbell's. She really, she, she seemed to be really relaxed. Campbellsville, Kentucky. You ever been there? Good. No, I haven't. Hell of a town. Last time you were here, we talked about the audition you did for Carousel. Remember that? If I loved you. Oh, it was for Take Me Along, but what the hell? It Take wasn't? Me oh, oh, yeah, it was okay. Oh, well, but the song, was from, the, the song was from Carousel. If I loved you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, right. Now, you did another audition I read about today for a show that was called Think Pink. The Pink Jungle. Pink Jungle. The Pink Jungle. It was about... Listen, accuracy is not important. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. See, see I, 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 I get these notes called the research in the afternoon, right? <laughs> And whatever they put in there, I believe is sure. to be true. Yeah. And then I bring it in here tonight for to be corrected by, by the guest. Yeah, but you're so gracious about mm -hmm. it. Well, I, I try to be gracious. Yeah. Like the guy who's coming on with right. grizzly bears probably has got, it's probably pythons, which he'll tell me when he comes out. See, yeah. I, I plug this guy, oh, Timothy Treadwell, bears, with the grizzly bears. It's probably pythons. Right. You know, right. a little misfire in the research. But it's okay. Now, I heard them talking. They were talking exclusively bears. Yeah, but that was just for show. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it wasn't called Think Pink. It was... It was the uh, Pink Jungle. It was the, about the cosmetics industry, and it represented, I believe, um, Ginger Rogers' return to Broadway. Oh. Of course, I hadn't seen her mm -hmm. the first time. And uh, this, I guess this is about auditions and the, the humiliations that actors uh, go through when you have to. Well, anyway, experience. it was a rainy day, and, and uh, uh, I came with my banjo, because at that time, this was before If I Loved You, 
you're supposed to have in your repertoire, if you're going to audition for musicals, a ballad, like with a love song, which always embarrassed me. It, it would embarrass me to sing a love song, and certainly to another person or to anyone. Sure. I, I found some people like, get off on ballads. And up tunes would be, uh, it's going to be a great day, one of those. Uh, yes, of sir, things. she's my baby. Well, or... no, well, that's a little arcane, you see. Oh, they want, oh, right. they want <laughs> up things well, yeah, oh, out, of, out of the music <laughs> theater. Up. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, this is my that. point exactly. Yeah. So, right. so right. I said it was a rainy day, and and, and, uh, and the, it was being produced by. It's been a rough night here, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very rough night. <laughs> but, but, but so anyway, you came in with a ballad and with a up. Uh, up to yeah. Uh, Not an arcane tune, an up to. Well, you're gonna wait. I'll tell you. You want to speak arcane? Wait, wait. So. I can hardly. So, so this guy Marty Free, I know. <laughs> this guy Marty Free was the stage manager. Yeah. yeah. And if you, <laughs> and it, oh, you're and, on a roll. Don't yeah, stop. Yeah. I, I am flushing. Yeah. In any case, um, uh, and, and he held the sides. What, what is the little scene? And you had to pass the, pa if you passed the singing audition, somebody gave him a nod or a wink. Right. And then as you came out, he would give you oh, the, give you a, some the pages. sides so that you would come back then and read. You'd go right. down with the other actors right. and read. So I went out with the banjo, and I kind of knew Marty. I said, hi, Marty. Now, and just so we have it, you, you do the songs, and if that's a hit, right. then you get the sides, the, the script to audition further. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, and, and this was being produced by a guy by the name of Paul Gregory, and it was being directed by a guy by the name of Joe Anthony, who I still don't know. It's just a name, and mm -hmm. it's a name that comes from the dark of the theater, but he was doing Broadway shows right. that I wasn't in at that time. Right. So I take out the banjo, <coughs> and my, excuse me, my uptune is Red Hot Mama, Red Hot Mama, goes with the banjo. Yeah, right? I understand. I've, I've heard the song. Okay, yes, sir, I've done the song. Uh, it's right up there with Yes, Sir, She's My Baby. <laughs> that's my baby. And, and then for my ballad, yeah. I did the old Rugged Cross. Oh. Oh, no, hey, oh, <laughs> well, that's Red Hot Mama to my old Rugged Cross. To the old Rugged Cross. What a switch. <laughs> and during the old Rugged Cross, which I, I, I say, yeah, I mean, you'd have to hear me do it, but it, it's not unmoving. I mean, I, when I get into it, it's something. Okay. It, it I don't know what it is. Okay. It, it touches me. Mm -hmm. Uh, during this, uh, Marty apparently came out and gave a little signal like that. Uh, it was a phone call for, uh, for Paul Gregory, so he got up out of the audience and, da -da -da -da, and crossed right in front of me. And then when I finished the song, uh, the director, another voice, said, sorry to have gotten you out in the rain. This was with, <laughs> as I was putting my banjo back. As I walked past Marty Fried, who's holding the things, he goes like this. He did, was going to give me a... <laughs> sorry to have gotten you out in the rain. Yes. <laughs> You know, had you sung that, maybe you would have gotten it. Right. Yeah. Anyway, let me take a fast break here for the stations and our sponsors. George Siegel is one of the stars of Just Shoot Me mm. on the NBC television network. Yes. Huge, huge monster. Mm. Remember when you came here about four years ago, was it? And you just gotten the first script for uh, Just Shoot Me and the little binder with... Yes, uh, from uh, Tucci. Uh, yeah, yeah, from Kathleen Tucci. Yes. And, and, and you were going to do it the next day, and you said, you know, maybe it'll go, maybe it won't. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Back with George C. Uh, amazing Grace. Oh, I Old could do that. Old Rugged Cross, Amazing, amazing Grace. Grace, Red Hot Mama. Now these, <laughs> now these messages. <laughs> we are back with George Siegel. Now, you have given a command performance in your lifetime before the Queen and the, uh, the, the Royal Court in England. You bet your you life. Bet your bippy. Right? Yes. What was the occasion of the... Uh, it was something in Edinburgh. Uh, which is in S Scotland? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're very bright there, very funny. Everybody's very smart, I found. In any case, I don't know what I was doing there. It was an excuse to take a... F they flew me there, mm -hmm. and I... But, like, had you, had you just been in a picture, where, uh, like, like, touch of class? Had you just been in that? Or... Well, well, uh, to quote Princess Anne, if I can just jump ahead. Sure. She was at the... At the uh, and, you know, all the performers line up afterwards, and the Queen, and in this case, Princess Anne and Prince Philip. Philip. Uh, would go down the line and go down the line. Exchange and pleasantries. When Princess Anne, who has beautiful skin, by the way, I don't really? know if you knew that. No, I didn't know. And that. the Queen as well. Uh, Prince Philip, I, I don't know. See, they're not, they're not, they're, they're not out in the weather that much. Right. Yeah. They, they are what we call protected. Protected. In right. any case, so your skin would be, I guess, as, as beautiful. But it was quite remarkable mm -hmm. because there's, there's bright lights backstage. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, uh, Princess Anne said yes. to me, yes. Are you close when she talks to you? Like this closer than we are now. Yeah. Can you imagine? On this close. That's how I know about the skin. I, right. I wasn't going to walk over. Right, right. Just, 
you're no stranger to our shores. <laughs> 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 so I guess that's why they invited me. Do you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I, there was a King Rat, which was with all those English actors, and oh, a sure. Touch of Class sure. was a big kind yeah. of thing oh, over yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Well, Glenda so, Jackson is and from... Glenda from Jackson, I was working with yeah. one of their own, yeah. and sure. Yeah. And, uh -huh. like, were there other American stars? Well, there was Kirk Douglas. That's pretty, oh, pretty, pretty yeah. impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, Robert Goulet, If ever I should leave you, right? Oh, thank you. Yeah. And, and... Um, he was on the show. Just shoot me. Did you mention that, that that's the no, show? Robert Goulet was on the show. Well, yes, we had what? him uh, on the show. I, he, I missed that one for some reason. Well, it hasn't been on yet. Oh, well, you that's see, why so I haven't seen it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you see? Yeah. So you have a chance. In, in any event, uh, uh, I think I've told the whole story. That's it. Oh, you're not supposed to look at the box, by the way. Oh, where the queen. Where the queen is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's called the queen's box. Box. Right. Thank the royal you. Box, right. if you will. <laughs> oh, yes, Prince Philip, here's something. Uh, Prince Philip, you know, when I play the banjo self-taught, mm -hmm. uh, I, ha I sometimes will put my thumb over, and the prince is a, is a uh, guitarist himself. Is he really? Yes, he yeah. is, yes. There was an actual professional guitarist. I did Alexander's Ragtime Band, mm -hmm. and it's funny. I kept banging my foot, and that orchestra just wouldn't keep up. We'd have had one rehearsal in the afternoon. Yeah, in any yeah, event, yeah. he said, that's interesting, put your thumb over the... And, and, and so I did have, we had that exchange. There's two musicians hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that, uh, that about uh, does... Oh, you're not supposed to look at the box. At the and box. Uh, Louis Armstrong, I don't know what the quote is particularly, but he looked at the box right away and said, hey, Pops, or something like that. Yeah, well, he he could be. Exactly. exactly. When you're a world-class yeah. jazz musician, mm -hmm. you can improvise anything. So... Um, but I did not look at the box, and that's very difficult not to do because I you know come out and you don't look at the box, and you want to look at the but box. But isn't it true that the minute they tell you what you're not supposed to look don't at, that's, isn't that the first thing you want to Absolutely. look at? Absolutely. Right. I remember the time that I went to the London Palladium and interviewed uh, Robert Morley. Remember oh, Robert Morley? Oh, yes. Yeah. Do, do, yeah, do On the stage of the yeah. London Palladium. Mm. And pissed in the Queen's Royal Loo. You did. Yeah. She wasn't there at the time. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But talk, okay. about, talk about uh, Oh, the funny, funny workman said, you know, they paint everything before she gets there. Oh, really? Yes, everything is painted fresh. And this guy who was working said, to her, the only thing the queen ever smells is fresh paint. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why she always has <laughs> 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 You know, for a shy guy, you're good at small talk. You really oh, are. Oh, well, thank you. No, it's the talker that makes the deal. The yeah. deal. And now, you. you were the youngest of three children. I was. Is, is, that a, is it good to be the youngest? See, I was the, I was the elder child, my brother the youngest. And my life was fine, so I thought, right. till he was born. And then right. my parents lavished all this praise on little Chicky, as they called him. Yeah. Yeah. I was Sluggo, and he was little Chick. Chick. Yeah. Yeah. Chick. Yeah. 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 Disgusting. Uh, yes, you do tend to get more attention and you get a kind of... Uh, but you were probably, I would just hazard this guess, but you were probably adult all your life, weren't you? No. You, no, you, weren't, you were a cut-up kid and you yeah. did wild things? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because you, 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 you present a serious mean. Do you know what yes, I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's all the uh, years adult. Of... There's something adult about you. It's correct. It's the years of training. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, yes. Being slapped by, by Jesuit. The, by the, well, not only by Jesuits, but by the women in my life. As I've said here before, my entire life is balanced on a huge bubble of estrogen. Oh. You know. Yeah. Daughter, granddaughter, all female. Really? Mother, female. Estrogen. Bubble. And if you pierce the bubble, bad. Very, very bad. So, adult, bubble intact. Good. Uh -huh. Pierce, you're, you're bad. <laughs> so connective words are kind of out now in, in the way you express yourself? You just kind of do telegrams? Is that? Yeah. 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 Just high points. High points. Yeah. yeah. What do you need? And and the. Yeah. I get it. In the Ten Commandments, do you hear and a lot? Not at all. Once. Well, Father yeah. and mother. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I know. Doesn't say neighbor's wife and. No, it no. doesn't. No. Doesn't say adultery plus. No, just. Certainly not. Yeah. Just, terse. Terse. So, as you were saying, as the youngest child. 
Was there a dot, dot, dot around the youngest child? I am the youngest child. That's I, I was wondering... In my family. What, what, we were talking about... Was it a good thing to be the youngest child? Well, uh, you know, I, I'm talking from my point of view. You of have course. to understand that. Right. From my point of view, it was great. Yeah. It was great. Uh, and there was a distance. There was six months between me and, the, and John. Uh, so it was like an only child thing, I guess. Anyway, six this months. is what you got. Six. At the end of all of that... With the, with the pecking order, I think mostly, mainly, it's genetic. That's what I think. Okay. You said six months between you and your... Did I say six months? Yeah. I'm losing it. Six years. Oh, okay. Uh, because six yeah. months, we, we, there would be a man from the circus here. Right. <laughs> That's the Iceman cometh, I believe, if it's six months. Yeah. You know what Mother used to say? Mm -mm. There was always one, you know, they got married, and five months later, the baby came. Right. Friends who count don't. Huh? Oh... Oh, isn't that nice? What a generous heart it is. Mm -hmm. So it happened a lot in those days. I yes, guess. it did. Yes, it did. Even in the best of families. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. Friends who count don't. Mm -hmm. Mother always counted. <laughs> well, she would. Yeah, yeah, she would. Now, I, I have to move on here to the uh, grizzly bears or the Absolutely. pythons, whatever they yes, are. Yes, it's going to be fascinating. Uh, let's hope so. And well, uh, you're going to be guiding it. Right? Yes, I am. Okay. Sure. Like you guide me, sweetie. Okay. It doesn't get better than that. Thank you for all the nice things you've done for us on this program, for being a good guy and being a pal. And I hope I see you when this winds down and continued success on Just Shoot Me. Thank you, Tom Snyder. You're, vel you're welcome, it. George Siegel. Thank Thanks for, for being a pal. Me feel welcome. We will continue with Timothy Treadwell and Bear Footage. B E A R now, come on. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 don't touch that dial. <laughs> <laughs>